I am excited to share with you tonight a list of mostly decodable books, many of which are free. And I'm going to go through some of these books and show you why I like them and how they can be so powerfully used. And also the nice thing you need to know about this uh, list that I'm offering you tonight is that there are many hyperlinks so that you could go and look for information about these mostly decodable texts. Fall. Now, um, there's a lot to like about Starfall. The, the first section I'd like you to go to would be this learn to read section, okay? And that's where you'll find a set of books that fit with the basic code and then the advanced code, a number of them. But you don't just have to read it on the computer, okay? So I want to give you a little hint about what to do. See this, um, well, maybe you can't see it, but at the top of the starfall.com page, there's, it says Student Parent Teacher Center, okay? That's important. So you can get these books, if you don't want to pay for them, you can get them for free to print out. So you go to that Student Parent Teacher Center, and then you see, um, actually, this is the store where you can buy them. So you can buy them and they're super cheap as far as books go, about the cheapest you can find. Right down here, this is one of my favorites, the learn to read, cut up, take home books. How many of you use that? I would encourage every person who ever teaches reading um, to beginners or even some to strugglers to get this as a set, get a set for all other students. So $2.25 will get you 20 books. Uh, five short vowels, oh, more than five advanced code books, the long vowels, and some others. And then kids can take these home. So what a gift if each of your kid had 20 books of their own. Okay, but uh, it, if you can't do that, or if you also want to supplement with um, copies that don't disappear, then you can go here to printable downloads, okay? And then check out under after consonants, short vowels, right here we've got Zach the Rat, okay? And that's what I wanted to read to you tonight first. So notice what's good about this, Zach is a rat. We've got the short vowel A, it's a nice safe place to start for many of our kids. Got a couple sight words or high frequency words, is and A, but the other two are three sounds and mostly decodable, or they are decodable. And then we go, Zach sat on a can. Okay, again, notice it's the short vowel still, and um, mo all of them really are decodable on maybe a sound you haven't taught yet, but the teacher could read it to the student. The ants ran to the jam. Okay, so that's nice because there's only one high frequency word, and then almost everything else is um, decodable. Ants is a little tricky. Why is that a little tricky? Four sounds, ants, ants. So here is soap boat. And it has multiple spellings of the O sound in it. Not all, many phonics books do that. My soap boat is sailing away, cries Joe. And this is a great example of what I was talking about when I say mostly decodable. I, I mean kind of two things here. I'm saying mostly you read decodable text. And I also mean that the text should be or could be mostly decodable. In other words, they don't have to be 100% decodable. There are some extremes of phonics thinking that you should only expose the child to what he or she has in text to what he or she's already been explicitly taught. But I don't um, suggest that for you because you need to develop your students' flexibility and when they have to think through, what could that be? My soap boat is sailing away, Krr, krr. and they haven't encountered the I sound before. Krr. They may look at that IE and they may wonder, and they're saying krr. They may put that together and figure it out for themselves. And wouldn't that be a glorious thing? Because they've just deduced something on their own that will stick with them. They've done the cognitive flexible flexibility um, act, and they are, and that is the, the act that you and I do to this day when we see an unfamiliar word. We play around with the sounds and we try to figure out what makes a, what sound would fit to make a word that we've heard? Is it Dostoyevsky or Dostoyevsky? Oh, I think it's Dostoyevsky. Is that right? Um, there's no rule for what that sound is in that Russian word. We are just playing with sounds. The question is, how much do we give our kids that um, 
flexibility or the force them to do that flexibility. And this I think is a perfect example. It's just really maybe one or two, one or two words that haven't been taught, like a maybe a way hasn't been taught yet, the A sound and it's a multi-syllable and the I and cries, maybe that's not been taught. But then on the next page, there aren't many, I, don't, I think. Um, the soap boat is lost in the sea, okay? Maybe the E-A is E hasn't been taught, but everything else has been. And then there's the repetition of soap boat. So that's what I mean by mostly decodable. So this is my other favorite. Nora Gatos has a collection of booklets like this. Uh, they have different names. On, our, on the list, you'll see Now I'm Reading, Animal Antics, which is this one. Now I'm Reading Playful Pals, Level 1. Now I'm Reading Big Fun, Level 1. Some of them are short vowel packs. Um, like this one is all short vowel and then some of them are, are advanced code the long vowels and she does a great job of not putting too many words on a page sticking with one phonic target sound and and making them funny so here's one that's a, a little higher level because it's got four sounds and it's got the two adjacent consonants at the end but she at the beginning of the series she has just three sounds so look at this the crab the bad crab. So the word crab is repeated, and we've got the, the short A. Notice the repetition of the beginning of the sentence. The bad crab grabs ham. The bad crab grabs. Oh, I misread it. I read it backwards. <laughs> First he grabs, then he grabs ham. But so it's just repeated. And there's silly illustrations, and kids love these. The bad crab grabs ham and jam. The bad crab dabs ham and jam on a trap. Uh, the book is almost over, so maybe you don't know what dabs means. You can stop and have a, let's have a comprehension moment and a vocabulary moment because the book is almost over. Uh-oh, bam, wham, the trap snaps. And the book is on, the, on its last two pages. The crab nabs, nabs a rat. The rat is mad. And that's the end of the book. So it's short. Kids can master this quickly. It targets one short vowel. It's got a mixture of three sounds and four sounds. There aren't too many high frequency words. This is a winner for those early readers. This is a favorite of mine. You may not have of encountered this before. It's kind of a small imprint. Miss Rhonda's Readers. And if you go to MissRhondasReaders.com, you can find these. And her first set is uh, has some examples here of the pink pig and the raccoon. Now these don't target just one explicit um, vowel sound at a time, so they're when your students are a little bit further along, maybe the third week, the fourth week, whatever, depends on where they're starting. But I like them because of the text, um, and you'll see what's good about this pink pig. Okay, here we go. The pig is pink. Okay, so we've got very few words. We've got the short vowel I and three sounds and four sounds. All those words are decodable or, you know, we've got the word the, which is high frequency. We are repeating some words. The pig is in a pen. We've got now two short vowels, but isn't that a cute picture? It's very simple. The picture is in alignment with the text and it's not, the thing about the one that we just read with Nora Gatos is there's a little bit of awkwardness. These are more natural, but they still target um, phonics information that your students may need to be studying. The pig naps in the sun. And now we've got three short vowels. Again, no real irregular words. The sun is hot. So now have we talked about, yeah, at this point, we, she's exposed them to all of the short vowels. So maybe this is a great book um, after you've taught all the short vowels. Or maybe when you've only taught three or four of them and you say, hmm, what could this be? The pig is, <sighs> they might just figure out hot, right? <laughs> That's how this works. If you give them sufficient phonemic awareness, sound-based decoding processing, and context, kids will put this together. They don't put it together when they don't have the phonemic processing. So if you don't know how that's um, solved, then go check out um, our core post about Switch It, which is the core reading simplified activity that gets this sound-based processing sorted out. <laughs> and you can find that at readingsimplified.com forward slash start dash here. Okay.